Hey folks, I'd like to take a quick look at how we can create flow maps in Houdini. So to create some flow maps, I need to go into SOPS. I'm going to put down the geometry container, jump into that. Now I'm going to put down a grid, and that's just going to represent our river surface for now. And I can hit space and G in my viewport to home my view. To create flow maps in Houdini, we need to have the Side Effects Labs toolkit installed. So to do that, you would need to click this little plus here, come to shells, and if you go all the way down to here, you need to turn on Side Effects Labs to start off with, and that will get you this shelf. If you don't have it loaded in, all that you will see will be this little button here, the little joystick. So you need to click on that, it will pop open a little window for you, and you will need to update it. Now I'm not gonna do so in this case because I already have it installed. Uh, when you go to update it, you will need to close Houdini down and you will need to start it up again and you should get all of these extra tools. We're going to be outputting our flow map as a texture and that means we're going to need to have some UVs on our grid. So let's put down a UV project and we can just jump over to the initialize tab just over here and hit initialize. Uh, I'm going to be painting our flow map colors onto the grid. And the flow map colors, because they're vertex based colors, they are resolution dependent. So I will need to have more polygons on my grid to get a more detailed flow map. So in this case, I'm going to subdivide my grid. And I'll put this up to three for now. And that should give me plenty of polygons to paint onto. If we hit tab and type flow, we can see these are the flow map tools that come with Houdini. And the one we're looking for just to get started is just the labs flow map node. And what this does is it creates a velocity vector. And we can see that if we take a look in our geometry spreadsheet, it's created this V attribute. And these are the numbers that we're going to drive when we start painting our flow map. You can turn on flow map here if you want to visualize the direction using these little line visualizers. I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to put down a flow map to color. And that will visualize the flow map direction as a color. And in this case, if I wanted to just get started, what I can do is I can comb the direction of the normals. In other words, I can comb these little guys that are sticking up here, if you think of those as like little hairs that are sticking up. So we can do that with a flow map brush node. Stick that guy in there. I can come over my viewport here, just hit enter to make sure that the tool gets picked up. You're probably going to need to increase the brush size. I'm just using the, the scroll wheel to do that and I can start painting my flow map direction. And you can see it's starting to push over all these little hairs if you want to think of it that way. Now I normally leave the visualize flow vector option turned off and instead I use the flow map to color node to visualize what I'm doing. So I put my display flag here I can select my brush tool and I could start painting away uh, to get my flow directions. So let's just imagine I've done a wonderful job painting all my flow directions for my water or my lava or whatever I'm doing. Uh, how do I write it out? Well, I'm going to use another labs tool, which is the labs map baker. Now, normally when you're writing stuff out in Houdini, you go to the out context and you put down your render nodes there for whatever renderer you're using. The Maps Baker is the Side Effects Labs team's effort to try and keep us over in SOPS to make it easy to get in and out of Houdini. So this is a render node uh, inside in your modeling context. In this case, I want to write out the vertex color. So this flow map to color here has turned our velocity attribute, which we were painting, which is just an attribute with some numbers in it. That's all that it is and it has converted it over to CD, which is, which is Houdini's attribute for color. We can see that in the geometry spreadsheet. The geometry spreadsheet is definitely your, your best friend in Houdini. If we see here, we have a CD attribute now, or G and B, which is why you're seeing this color in the viewport, and that's what we want to write out to disk. So we want to write out our color attribute here. So if we come down and look on our maps baker, we don't care about ambient occlusion here, so turn that off. This is the one we want, color. So it's going to generate this, it's going to write it out to disk for us, and I'd like to be able to preview it after it's been written out. So I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it in here into the preview channel. 
I need to take a look at where it's going to write out. In this case, it's going to write it out to my, wherever my HIP file is stored, which should be in a Houdini project. It's going to look for a render folder and it's going to save it out with this HIP name and then with the channel. Now, I do not have my HIP saved out correctly. So I'm just going to dump this out onto the desktop for right now, which is terribly bad practice, but however. Flow map. And we'll say dot TGA. Brilliant. Just gonna write that out to my desktop. And flow maps can be quite small, so I'll put it 512 by 512. And we can hit render, and there it is. There is my flow map written out to disk. And here it is loaded back in because I had set my preview channel correctly. So this is written out to this now. I can bring it into Unity or Unreal or wherever I need it to go. I want to be able to see how my flow map is going to distort my water textures on the Houdini side. I don't want to have to keep bouncing over and back between my game engine and Houdini. And I can do that using a Labs flow map visualize node. So I can put this down just over to the side here. And I'm just going to go directly from the flow map to color into my visualize. I can set my display flag to here. Now I need to press play. I've got my animation toolbar hidden, so I'm going to pop that up. I can speed it up a good bit by using this speed slider just up here. And there you go. You can now see this texture being pushed around quite clearly uh, being distorted by the flow map that I created earlier. If I wanted to, I could go and load up my flow map that I saved out to disk. It's going to look the same in this case, but I could change the flow map from using this color here to using a texture and go and look for my flow map that's out on disk and I could load this one in instead. Uh, and I could also go and pick out a different image if I wanted to. I could go and paint a stylized water texture, for example, and I could load that in here. I can go back and repaint my flow map using the flow map brush node to define my directions and then write it back out to disk. Now that our flow map is written out to disk, the last thing we have left to do is to write out our wonderful model of our river here. So to do that, we can put down a ROP output node. So ROP geometry output here. Now, whether we want to take out the high poly version that we painted on or potentially a lower poly version is dependent on what we're going to do with it in the game engine. If we were going to do some kind of displacement, we will still want a certain amount of polygons. But in this case, I'm just going to take my very low poly mesh and I'm going to run it out. Now, it will need UV, so I'll run out after the UV project here. So I'm going to need to decide where I want to put it and what file format I want to use. So if you're using Houdini Apprentice, you won't be able to export FBX, and that's because it is owned by Autodesk, so you would need a license for that. So there are very few limitations with Houdini Apprentice, but that is one of them. In this case, you could write it out as an OBJ instead. Again, I'm going to ignore the proper way of doing this, which is creating uh, our own Houdini project. And I'm going to write it out onto my desktop here. And I'm just going to call it riverbank.obj. And Houdini is clever enough to pick up from the extension what file format I want to write out to. So I can hit save to disk here and that would write out my model. And now I have my model and my texture saved out and I can bring those over to my game engine. So this was a quick and simple look at creating a flow map in Houdini for game engines. The particular method we looked at here has some clear disadvantages. It is resolution dependent. If you go and change the number of polygons in your grid, you're going to lose all of your painting. It is a very simple little setup and Houdini excels at complex setups that you actually run into in game development. So in the next video, I'll take a look at doing a slightly more complex setup for our flow map.